Hi everyone, so Chris and Luke back now doing the FAQ 4.3.0 rundown which went into effect, oh sorry, this is actually 4.3.1, we've lied, because 4.3.0 yeah. went into effect on the 17th of March 2016, retroactively stripping everyone of the wins who cheated, um, but they've stealth edited the year to be correct. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> It's like, oh, this is, I don't remember this FAQ coming out last year. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. So it is... Um, a hefty, FAQ cards that haven't been released. <laughs> it's a hefty document now. Um, yeah. There are, uh, I think it was like 16 pages worth of actual changes. Uh, if we scroll down the FAQ and errata, we're just going to stop at any of the pink writing. So if you're watching the video, you can watch along with us. If you're listening to a podcast, I will try to read out the things we're talking about first. So the first change is rules reference, simultaneous attack rule, page 17. And um, it should read, during the combat phase, all ships with pilot skill value equal to, an active sh to the active ship have the opportunity to attack before being destroyed. Um, it basically removes the wording um, opportunity to attack and replaces it with um, activates. So it helps clarify weird instances yeah. like Dengar's revenge shots and stuff. So, yeah, it's more of a clarification than a sort of yeah. so change. I think the biggest thing with it is if Dengar is of equal pilot skill to a ship attacking him and does not have initiative, so the opponent has initiative, shoots your Dengar and kills him, you used to get your revenge shot, which was an opportunity to attack, and then he would be removed. So now, if you have a Dengar, you would get your revenge shot and then activate and get your normal shot. Uh, okay. So that's what which, this change actually means. Yeah, and that kind of feels like it the way it should be. That's because how you it should get be. Your, yeah. It's how I enforced it and ruled it in the events that it, well, it never came up, but it, yeah. ha it has come up at different events and by the wording of opportunities to attack there was um, arguments either way so yeah. it's, it's a nice clarification for it we then have a little emperor palpatine change i'm ready i'm ready <laughs> you got your hammer you've you got gonna, one of my hammers <laughs> you're gonna beat this one right down uh, this card should read imperial only <laughs> This card should have always read. Once per round, before a friendly ship rolls dice, you may name a die result. After rolling, you must change one of your die results to a named result. That die result cannot be modified again. Alright. Who's going first, you or me? Um, I can basically explain the function of it, if you like. Or do you want to give your opinions first? Well, why don't we... Yeah, let's go through the function of it and then... Uh, bounce so, opinions around. So obviously old Palpatine was you roll and then pick a die if you want to change it. You know, yeah. you're basically declaring its use on a die roll before you've rolled it. And technically I suppose you could pick any result you like, but um, you... Yeah, I suppose you could pick blank, couldn't yeah. you? There's no reason why you can't. Yeah, by the wording of the card, you can pick blank. Yeah. But... Um, you... Do you have to pick a legitimate result for the, the... dice, or can you pick, like, six? <laughs> um, I would guess that because you have to change a face to that result, that the world may end if you pick a result that isn't on the face of a die you're rolling. Well, by if we're going to get this far down into it, after rolling you must change one of your dice results to the named result. Yeah. I, have, I have other dice with other things on them. Okay, you know. so yeah, that we'll, we'll ignore in Luke because why wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Practically, you know I'm right. <laughs> Don't even get me started on gra grammar. We'll get to that when we hit Hotshot Co-Pilot. Okay, yes. Um, so I'll let you open up with your thoughts on new pulp. So whilst this is the biggest hammer I have uh, with me today, uh, I actually think it's a little bit too far the other way. Um, 
when you take into account his um, his his pre-existing points cost, uh, the fact that he takes up two crew slots, um, I think maybe it's gone a bit too far the other way. Um, just it's it's like it's, it's basically um, Imperial C three PO, but slightly better. Uh, a lot, uh, a lot better. It's imperial. I don't know that he's eight points worth of good anymore. But then, when he came out, people said he's eight points. That's quite a lot. People, I didn't. People, other people on reputable podcasts yeah. that you may be part of said. Yeah. No, I, I know, and uh, <laughs> you'll be happy to know. But I'm going to disagree with you. <laughs> so I will, uh, I will concede the point that. If Palpatine was previously a tier one card, he's not a tier one card now. Yeah. Right? Pre- that's the preface of his argument. He is not as good as he used to be. I concede that point. So, what other stuff was tier one? Like, Zuckers, so, I, I, you make so your one. argument is more based on. Um, the other stuff in the FAQ, like Manaru, if and everything that is good got hit. Steve's, yeah. Everything okay. that is good is still good, but the it's, it's not less good together. Yes. So yeah. that's that part of it done. I will freely argue that Palpatine isn't as good as he was, but. Yeah. 3PO, if you take him purely from a defensive standpoint, I'm going to have to try and remember Bob's math on this now, but 3PO can easily be worth upwards of um, 6 to 15 points, depending on the number of times you get to proc him. And I think yeah, something, I remember along the whole thing. Those, yeah. something along those lines. And that's yeah. on a given ship that you can only attack once. And right. Uh, yeah. You know, if you're not attacking that ship, 3PO does nothing. Palpatine can have effectively a similar effect on any ship that you're shooting at and still doesn't have a range restriction. Yeah, see, I think I would have gone that way with both. I mean, I know they've gone that way with Manaru, but I would have gone that way with Palpatine as well. I said it's range 1 to 2 or it's range 1 to three i think maybe is a bit extreme yeah like those it's for me those aren't really nerfs because you want to get value out of whatever shit palpatine's on anyway blah 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 uh, but for this one the reason i think that it's still good is because it commonwealth defenders takes a massive hit from this yeah but um every other like traditional pal bases uh, if you think back to vader fell and the current meta we're sitting in, where it's like two to three ships that have like pilot skill nine is back to being high again. You're not having to bid to 11 to get a yeah. high pilot skill. You're now in a, an area of how many times is Fel or Vader actually going to be shot in a round? So it doesn't matter if yeah. you can't see. If you can. I'm saying, there is but more outplay potential that you can't just one fell in range two of everybody on your opponent's waist, which I would argue that you should never have been able to do that because it's not punishing bad flying. But Pulp will still reward better players, and I think better players will still get eight, more use out of him. They'll than get you more than yeah, more than eight points worth of value out of this card. Yeah. Okay. So well, that would be my I. Argument. Yeah. I see what you mean about reducing everything, but I think probably yeah. it's a bit harsh. I never had enough of a problem flying again. I've never really flown Imperials. Yeah. I've never had enough of a problem with him to think he is super duper broken. No, and. Um... I've flown yeah. him and flown against him and would have been fine without changing him, but I was also fine with pre nerf whisper. So I'm a, I'm an advocate. Well you said of... you had a had a had a headache at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, well there we are. Okay. So alright. Uh, Should we move on? Yep, yeah, so yeah. I've scrolled down to the next page which contains the rest of the changes that we uh, are going to be focusing on. 
Yeah. So, um, so Tai X7. Yeah, this one's only a small one. This one's only yeah. a small one. Yeah. Gone. Uh, yeah, it is only a small one. This is my granddad's hammer. Is it like, is this going to be an Only Fields and Horses reference to no. like your granddad's broom? Or... Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apart from the fact that I've replaced the head and this has worked really well for the American audience. Apart from the fact that I've replaced the handle and the metal bit several times, it's my granddad. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. Um, the second sentence should read <laughs> after executing a three, four, or five speed maneuver. If you did not overlap an obstacle or ship, you may perform a free evade action. So, so uh, go on, I went first last time, you go first this time. Uh, I'll cover the functional changes again. So, obviously, bumping turns off your evade. And you never, you don't gain the token. It's an action, so stress turns it off as well. Yeah. So there you go. Two ways to outplay X7 now: stress and blocking. Yeah. And also, if you're shit, you won't get as much value out of X7. Yeah. So. I think this is just where it needs to be, actually, which is why it's only a small hammer. Yeah. This is, if this is how it came out, this would still be better than Tie D. Which is unfortunate, but I think there's argument. It tidy is dependent on what three point cannons there are, ultimately. Yeah. But X seven is still the better of the two titles at the moment, and. Um, See, what would you say if they instead of changing the text, they change the points cost to zero? It shit. Don't take it. <laughs> Literally. Okay. Um, it, you, it needs a point reduction as well. The platform isn't good enough at the current point value. Even okay. that's why I say tie D is re reliant on the cannons because the ones you can take either do zero damage or no damage or one damage. You, yeah. And that extra one point of damage doesn't give me the value I need from the current points value of a platform. If you could take a mangler. Tie D would be amazing. Oh, if you could take a manga, yeah, it would be uh, horrific. Yeah, if you could take a HLC, I, I would run, go back to running my two HLC defenders. And yeah. I used to win games with them um, in Wave 4. I think I would decimate people in Wave 10. If, they, yeah. if Tie D let you have HLC shots in addition. But it doesn't. So there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's. If a cannon comes out that costs three points, and even if it's like, just two attack, yeah, cards. there might be an argument there, but it's very much cannon dependent for how good tidy is. X seven only works because it reduces the cost of a platform because the defender okay. platforms are overcosted. It's as we get to Manaru, the you'll see me argue this from the other side of why Manaru is still good. Yeah, Manaru's still good. So we could jump through Zuckus and straight to Manaru now, unless you've got more you want to add on X7. No, I think X7 is now exactly where it needs to be. Yeah. Um, because actually at the tournaments that I've played at in the last month, I can quite happily go to town on defenders and block them and get in their way, and they're reasonably predictable. Yes. Um, and, oh, you've not got a free evade action. Well, I'm going to slam you with the other ship I've got here. And you've not got any actions. You're tokenless. Yeah, so. I, I think that having outplay potential is a big part of the four changes we're going to talk about. Uh, yeah. Palpatine isn't use it when you need it. There's a point of risk, so you can make the wrong choice with Palpatine now. Um, yeah. X7 can be outplayed. We'll go through Zuckus anyway and uh, talk yeah. about this. So, um, Zuckus, this card should read Scum only. When attacking, if you are not stressed, you may receive any number of stress tokens to choose an equal number of defense die. The defender must re roll those die. So, I think um, what, as a Scum player, I really lack is a choice of one point crew cards <laughs> so um that this the only one point crew card i ever see 
to uh, apart from fall on uh, to be so horribly nerfed is a is a tragedy uh, and this gets so, uh, this gets somewhere between these two I'm saving the third hammer you'll see why in a second I think it's probably about right so just to be clear because we never hit this one it's a uh, compared to a I'm exactly the same. Um, <laughs> yeah, good hopefully thing. that will come across in the podcast. Um, I think this is probably about where it needs to be because it adds, uh, it, again, it comes back to um, risk, uh, reward, making the right decision to use it or not. Yeah. I guess generally you're going to use it in the first engagement because you're going to want to alpha something off. Um, but then... It this with Manaru's changes basically kills Dengaru. Yeah, I think uh, that would be my point. That uh, it's hard for me because on the one hand, uh, Dengaru is already dead with the Manaru changes and the existence of Wax Razi. I think kill off Dengaru without any changes to Zuckus. I I haven't seen. Dengaru winning an event for a while now. I'm, for, admittedly, I don't scale a list juggler every weekend to see what's just won, but the talk of Dengaru hasn't been around for a while. It's all been it's down, down a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, but but that's irrelevant to my feelings on it. Um, I now think that this, because Dengaru is already dead the other one's a party bus and I don't feel like good players were losing to a party bus this again this feels like the dead eye change um for just nerfing contracted scouts because bad people lose to it and like I don't so that's my I think this one is the hardest nerf like Palpatine didn't bother me as much as Zuckus because okay. like the only way it's any good is on a party bus and then it's not good. It makes it possibly playable. Uh, and as you say, my boss build with the homing missile, it doesn't affect me in the slightest. I will wait yeah. and see when you you roll your dice and if you get triple evade, I will Zuckus all three of them because it doesn't bother me, whatever. So it kind of feels like an, a change for the sake of changing it. But then, rationally, I think it's a one-point crew card. What do all the other one-point crew cards do? And go, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so from, there's a lot of them. Yeah, and there's... Um, from, there where zero, he, yeah, sorry, from where he was, is nowhere near as good. This is a massive hit with a nerf bat, but realistically, you were right. This is probably where he should have been. Yeah. So, yeah, it's fine. Everything's fine here. How are you? So, Manaru. Yep. Oh, Manaru. So, uh, you know, you're in the Chad role here, so you need to read the text. Yeah, so... This card should read, at the start of the combat phase, you may assign all focus, evade, and target lock tokens assigned to you to another friendly ship at range 1. So, yeah. Range 1 instead of wherever the hell you like. Yeah. No more K4 unhinged, you know, running around the back of the board. Yeah. Um, so for this, I have this hammer. A claw uh, hammer. Which... A claw hammer, which is bust um, because it was cheap, and uh, just let me. Uh... So it's actually the the nicest hammery sounding one of the three of them because one of them's a mallet, um, but it's bust. It's actually broken, and I, I I'm using this one for Manaru because I think they've hit her so hard that they broke the hammer. I think this is the worst, the hardest nerf of the three, a four yeah. even. Yeah. So I would say that. For 28 points, you still get the best focus engine for a mine went waste in the game. Yeah. I would argue that... So, 
the counter to oh why did we go range one range two would have been fine and you've got to remember that it isn't within range two it's at range two so it's practically range three you can't reduce it to range three because that's practically no range restriction at all so if you don't reduce it to range one she is still immune to target locks there is no way as your opponent to outplay that Manaru can pass red target lock tokens to a different ship. Okay, yeah. So I think that is the target lock one is the biggest reason why I would advocate for it being range one. Range one. Because yeah. it makes it easier to still fight. Like If you're running a year list, for example, if you've got, you've put your target locks on Manaru, Oh, passed them off. Whatever. Uh, then you can't fire your torpedoes because she passes them off to someone miles away who you can't shoot at. Yeah, she basically kills ordnance, and yeah. they were trying to fix ordnance. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be my argument. Like, if she's passing to a ship at range one, and you let and you did it in such a way that you can't still fire your ordnance. It's still, it's still possible. I think it's a lot less likely. Like you have been outplayed if that happens, not yeah. just out rules on the card. Yeah. And she is still twenty-seven points. Yeah. It's... Yeah, she's still cheap. The jump master still cheap. The dial's still really good. Yeah. Um, conversely, although um, I don't really intend on picking the jump masters up for a bit, I think the combination of these four things make my list better um if i could fly it <laughs> which i couldn't last weekend um what you want because... to do is get uh, manaru with k4 and then start taking assault proton torpedoes everything's range one so you want to be up, up close anyway yeah. <laughs> um yeah loads of bandits with um uh, I guess. yeah anyway um i think the bringing the the four things that they've lowered the power level of don't affect the way I was running my mind link jump masters. No, nope, they do not. And actually, they reduce the power of the things that I was struggling with. I, I say struggling with. I never got up high enough up the rankings to play yeah, Paraton I mean, properly. So. They, these nerfs to Horton are um, pretty high. Well, isn't that just what he didn't come with in terms of the EPT? <laughs> okay, so for people who are watching this video in isolation, go and watch part four. I'll link it after the video. Yeah. Um, okay, so I before... I'm conquering 58th place. Yeah. I suppose, yeah, I'll summarise my thoughts on the, the big four changes. Well, but we've got to. There is another massive change, but I don't want to jump ahead too much. Um, it... Nerf, it cuts the top end off the current meta, which means that everything that was good is better by comparison, if that makes yeah. any sense. But yeah. I think the big problem you're going to have, uh, we've lost Luke a little bit, I'm sure he'll come back soon. You still um, hear talking. I can you? hear you. Is that yeah. better? Uh, yeah, you're back. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so the big one for me is that they nerfed jump masters with a dead eye change, and it was jump masters that were keeping TLTs in check. So I, my worry would be, not personally, because I don't care, I can beat TLTs, I'm not shit, but a lot of people complain about TLTs and what is there now to hold them back? If people are going to decry the fact that the defender's dead because you can outfly it, are people going to decry the fact that Palpatine Aces is gone? Um, what You know what I mean? There's yeah, nothing. yeah. So all these kind of changes do. And this isn't anything wrong with this FAQ or FFG in general. This is just the way it is when you go take this approach to game design, which you have to do because of the way the release schedules work. Yeah. All that nerfing something does is make something else broken. And that's why I yeah. giggle to myself when people um, talk about all oh, the, the, the matters stale and all this kind of stuff. It will always be this way. All this yeah. does uh, is change what is making it yeah. stale. Yeah, and yeah. 
people will always gravitate towards the um the not point not one percent mathematically better list because it's not point not point one percent better so um I'm yeah, happy. which hammer do you choose yeah i'm happy with the changes i think that most of them may not necessarily have been needed but the they do rebalance everything that is currently yeah. popular. Um, I think you, when you say they cut the top off the meta, I think that's a good way of describing it. They sort of r slice the top bit of the bell curve off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the next change we come to is immediately. So immediately is used as emphasis on some cards. It is purely reminder text and has no distinct game effect. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Move on. I did um, see somebody questioning whether that changed Vessery, but it didn't, so let's no, move on. Yeah, so the Vessery thing is interesting because it was immediately after rolling dice, so do I have to have a target lock ready to put on Vessery? If I miss the immediately, do I not get to put it on? <laughs> that's what it's saying, is that because it said immediately, you don't literally, as soon as I mean, the dice how... are rolling, you don't have to have applied that target lock. You can take as much time as you like, as long as you don't move on to the next step. Yeah, but is there a, you know, might you get called for slow playing if you go from 2.1 uh, to 2.2 or 3 too quickly or slowly? Who knows? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, resolving simultaneous effects. Uh, this is a relatively long one that goes into a fact that if stuff happens at the same time, um, the... Uh, the player controlling the effect, which happens first, because the player with initiative gets the first effect, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. The person controlling chooses the order in which it... So at Mara Jade, mm -hmm. applying stress, you get to put the stress from Mara Jade on first for everyone. And yeah. uh, um, it talks about Fel receiving stress. Um, it would get a focus token before you... It would get... Yeah, he'd get two focus tokens from two yeah. stress. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. Um, yeah. But that, that bit is actually a separate section, I believe, but we'll, uh, we'll get uh, to the that. The foul thing, yeah. Um, slam timing just got clarified that the effects uh, trigger, if an effect triggers after performing an action or after ex executing a maneuver, you can do either one of them can trigger off a slam because it is a maneuver and an action um yeah wait, wait so hang on does that change when you can drop the bomb or not um no well yes because so or not i hate that so it does not change anything to do with dropping bombs because bombs are dropped on a revealing of a dial right okay or as an action so, and can you um the Currently, there is no... Can you push into the slam, then? Uh, no, that's still on the slam card as rules. Slamming can never be done as a free action. Right, and, okay. And oh. push for limits lets you, after performing an action, perform a free action. Fine. Yeah, rules. Just... <laughs> uh, touching and barrel rolling. The state of touching occurs after a ship performs a manoeuvre where it base overlaps another ship and that ship moves backwards along its movement template. If a ship performs a barrel roll, it cannot end the activation overlapping another ship and therefore it cannot be touching. So the physical models can touch. That's not what it's saying. It's just yeah. they are not considered touching for the purpose of the defined rule of touching. Yeah. So enough touching there. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was going down a dark path. No. Grab them by the barrel rolls. Grab them by the barrel rolls. So why is Manaru... Uh, it's because it's a change rather than a clarification. Yeah, so that's yeah. Ratters. Then we have Card Clarifications, which is section yeah. three. Uh, we have Condition Cards. I'll show you the dark side. Shaking fist. Uh if a ship with this card assigned to it must suffer critical damage during attack, it must suffer the damage card assigned to. I'll show you the dark side instead. Even, Even if, if it, it has is. shield tokens, blah, blah, blah. Vader doesn't work. Lots of clarifications on Marek doesn't work either. Um, 
So Marek would work if you roll two crits. If two crits would be assigned, the first one has to be, I'll show you a dark side, then the second crit would still, as long as you don't have shields, blah, blah, blah. If you're yeah. applying a second crit to hull, his ability still triggers. You don't get to draw four cards could, and yeah. pick between them all, but that weird thing that people tried to argue. Yeah, which was, yeah, good. Um, the Bosk nerf of and R4D6 can be used. So, yeah, whatever. Uh, Wait, what? And, hang on. When a ship Bosk may cancel the... Oh. Oh. Yeah. Before... So could you do... Does that mean you could do it after R4D6? Because R4D6 cancels hits, not crits. So could you say to your opponent, do you want to use R4D6? They would say no. Then you would say, okay, and now I'm cancelling it down to two hits. No. Boss may cancel a crit result and add two hit results before draw the fire. Zizor and R4D6 uh, can be used. So yeah, Boss has may to use it. cancel. Yeah. So you're inferring too much so okay. the the may cancel is that he may do use his ability if he uses okay. his ability it happens before these things so okay all right he, draw the fire can't pull a crit off before boss does it Zyazar yeah. can't pull a crit off before boss does it but equally but you can wait with r4d6 to yes, see what he's but, gonna do but, yeah, yeah. Right. exactly so, okay. don't use boss ability if they have a four d six. Yeah, because you'll only get two hits. Yes. Um, well, I suppose unless you've rolled like a trillion crits, then just do it for shits and giggles. <laughs> so when does hang on? When does our four d six then? Um, it happens in the compare results step which is the same uh, step which is cancel all hit re um, hit results to only suffer two hits I believe it's the one it's a charge that goes on big because I'm going to have to find it now you yeah ship back. yeah but so I'm still not entirely I think rules as intended you're right I'm not sure that rules as written you're right because oh there's the cat hello um, yeah. um, you have to have been hit, which is after 6.4. Right, so you... This is why we all really play this game. Oh, fuck. fuck you, buddy. Fuck you. <laughs> um, if I look it up, it's going to screw my screen up. Okay, yeah. give me a second. Uh, I'm just going to have to open it up now so everyone gets to see the other stuff I was looking at. Except me. Yeah, except you. There you go. Back to FAQ. I'm going to have to find... In fact, I could just Google the card, can that? R4 D6. I'm going to have to read the wording on this crappy card now. Blah, blah, blah. Stuff and jam. What, where are you in this? I don't want no Wikipedia entry. God damn it. Oh, this is worth it. <laughs> this yeah, is worth it itself. <laughs> this is your fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> I've come from 40k. I've spent years manipulating the wording of car. <laughs> when, when you are hit by an attack and there are at least three uncancelled hit results, you may choose to cancel all results until there are only two remaining. For each result cancelled in this way, receive one stress. So in what way are you arguing that this... All right, so that... But you... Okay, fine. So... So I'm right. You're wrong. r 4 d 6 happens at... After um, Bosk has translated the crit, because Bosk also happens is if there is an uncancelled crit. Okay, and both of those things happen... After did the attack hit? Yes, before yes. the dip damage step. Yes. Fine. All right. So we need a. It's fine. We just need you to listen to Chris. Wow. Yeah. Boom. Right. Okay. We still haven't got to my um, my favourite part of this FAQ yet, but keep going. Uh, 
Using Countdown's ability will make the attack miss as there are no uncancelled hit or crit results. So you keep your stealth device. So you keep your stealth device, you also trigger gunner. Yeah. If Han Solo is placed overlapping an obstacle during setup, he suffers the effect of overlapping an obstacle. If he suffers damage from this, he removes a shield. This yeah. is obviously Force Awakens Han Solo. Because... Force Awakens Han Solo. Uh, this is where I would like to break the game, uh, if I may. So, um, this is more of a clarification, uh, because it happens out before the game starts. So yeah. there was the argument about whether you whether it happens or not. I really hope the cat doesn't start licking his butt. Um, it's okay, it's not even in the shot. <laughs> all right, okay, good. So it's there for Han Solo. It is not there for anybody who's affected by Lieutenant Dormitz. Okay? And the, for those of you who don't remember, Lieutenant Dormitz is the Upsilon class shuttle. During setup, shut up. During setup, friendly ships may be placed anywhere in play area of range one to two of you. So it's not there for him. Although, uh, based on this precedent, you would say that it would happen. Correct? Agreed? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you have this is very situational. You're going to but... talk about um, putting the evade on. Do you remove the evade instead of a shield? Is that where you're going to go? No. That's where you should have gone because that would have been a more interesting question. Okay. But carry on. So. You're running new Han Solo for some reason that we can't explain. Um, and I have Lieutenant Dormitz. I put Lieutenant Dormitz down for some reason that we can't explain, apart from the fact that clearly you maybe don't know what I'm about to do. Uh, you put Han Solo at range three and a bit of Dormitz. Yep. Okay. I then put Quick Draw on a debris field at within range of yep. Han Solo. And I have an electronic baffle, and I take a shield off. You get to fire. <laughs> Gus, I, yeah, I get to fire before the game starts. Yeah. Yeah. Fun times. I'm so pleased at myself for being able to figure that out. Yeah, the, the better one. Right, so <laughs> if you use Hyperwave Com Scanner on Dormits and deploy them, they would get to assign the evade token. So... The, you'd lose a shield or take a damage, but you'd keep the evade token because oh, yeah. you're on a rock not taking damage, which is yeah. weirdly interesting. So um, the list I kind of thrashed out was Dormit's Quick Draw, Epsilon 8 and Omega. So you're really worried about the Force Awakens Han Solo meta that's going to emerge yeah. from this FAQ, yeah. and you've got this hidden yeah. cheese that you've just shared, shared with the internet. Yeah. I haven't quite done the math on rule of 11, whereas it, it to, if you both have dormits, I don't know if it works. I'm not very good at that sort of thing, uh, as we discovered from the last episode. I can't quite... It's only got 10 fingers and thumbs. It's not from Marum. No, I'm not from Marum. No. Uh, I'm from Essex. So that was... I was really pleased that I managed to break... Like, you get to shoot before the game starts, which I think is stupider than what this uh, clarification says because actually um, I don't think new Han Solo needed what I feel is a kind uh, of a light nerf. I think it's more of they're trying to not have a precedent for a time where the obstacles aren't actually obstacles apart from Dash. But, what do you mean? As in if it's an obstacle and you're on it it should be an obstacle and you're on it yeah okay because of all of the other instances like with the talk of tractor beams being put across it and all of that yeah, they yeah, yeah, either okay. are or they aren't so i don't yeah. think it's targeted at han oh. but in the films and i know that this doesn't apply to x-wing very much in the films, know, they do spend a great portion of one film hiding uh in an asteroid I've won, I've won games by landing Han on a rock. Ask Chad, in fact. I beat Chad at Nova Open, I think it was, by landing Han on a rock, sacrificing my shots for that round, and then completely getting behind him. Better position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's because I'm a wily old smuggler. Yes. <laughs> yeah. While so there we go. 
Um, I bet you weren't expecting to spend that much time on hands. I bet nobody was expecting to spend that much time on hands. Like that, but there we are. Then we have the Inquisitor. Um, the only only range of attack is treated at range one. Any abilities that reference the range of ships, such as Kernar Jax, Concordon Protector. Pardon me. Uh, Kernar Jax, Concordon Protector are not affected by the Inquisitor's ability. Auto Thrusters does not trigger against the Inquisitor's primary weapon attack. Yeah. There we go. I thought that was in there anyway, or did I just assume that? I think because they've... I don't know. You probably did assume it because everyone said. Pardon me. This stupid great value core. Um, I can't afford real coke. I don't get enough YouTube views yet. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> youngster, Is it you that we need to get more subscribers for? Oh, definitely. I mean, I don't care about your seven people who watch your channel. Right. I need five. Well, that is me. <laughs> um, youngster can use his ability in conjunction with TIE fighters, TIE FOs, and TIE SF fighters. Special forces TIEs. So, yeah. so like when you put Rage on Youngster, you can have something else on Quick Draw now. <laughs> yeah, so you don't even need Rage on Quick Draw to do Rage in Quick Draw. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and so you could, yeah, but great. So, adaptive... I've seen youngster on the table once. Yeah, did he have marksmanship? Uh, no, he had expose, and he was part of a like crack swarm. Like exposing raging quick draw, yeah, with um, experimental interface. That would work out both of your arcs, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, you would have yeah. to then take lightweight frame to have any chance of getting a second attack evade dice. But... Game broken. Yeah. Um, if a ship equipped with adaptive ailerons overlaps an obstacle as part of this additional manoeuvre, it suffers the effect of overlapping it as described in the obstacle section on page 14 of the rules reference. See page 2 of the FAQ for errata of this section. Yeah, thanks for referencing two different pages, two different documents, and your one rule for a thing we didn't really need because people are stupid. Um, yeah. For example, if a ship using ailerons overlaps an asteroid, it would roll for damage but not skip its perform damage step. If a ship equipped with adaptive ailerons perform overlaps... Perform action step. Yeah. Because they're basically... The, re the wording no, is... No, I'm just correcting you on what you said. You said perform damage step. I don't know. Perform action step. Stupid game, yeah. anyway. Um, yeah. Basically, people are arguing that if the adaptive ailerons maneuver overlaps an obstacle, <coughs> you'd skip your perform action step because that's a rule on the obstacle part of a maneuver overlapping it. But yeah. in a roundabout way, shut up, it didn't happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love just abusing all the people who do watch my videos. It's a wonder why I can't afford real color. Yeah. Emperor Palpatine has got a clarification. Does um, it say C above? Oh, no. no. A player may change a die result. It is uh, already yeah, showing. Oh. For example, if you say crit, <coughs> you can change a crit to a crit because you must yeah. change it as part of his new card text. Do you think this is in there for people like me? Yes. Okay. Um, apparently, the word when needed to be changed in heavy laser cannon i'm gonna to have to check the last faq to see what word they had in there i'm assuming it wasn't fuck or something like that <laughs> but um it was probably it just was like <laughs> pineapple and attack is performed <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah I, I really want to know now um hotshot co-pilot when attacking a ship with hotshot co-pilot equipped the defender must spend the focus token after a declare target step and before the end of the modifi modified dice step I'll, I'll say it again so it's a little bit clearer so then we can talk about how bad this is grammatically yeah. when attacking a ship with hotshot coal pilot equipped the defender must spend the focus token after the declare target step and before the end of a modified di uh, defense dice step so i have got a, a binary pirate z95 headhunter you have got Han Solo with Hotshot Copal equipped. I am now going to attack a ship with Hotshot Copal equipped. Wait, what? Yeah. I've got Hotshot Copal. Yeah. I'm attacking a ship that has Hotshot Copal equipped. 
You paid four points. Oh to have yeah. To spend oh your bloody Vulcan. hell! Yeah. I had not even bothered to. Read. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I just looked at that and went, "I assume that does what I thought it did." And... Yeah, it does. But grammar. <laughs> when attacking is... <laughs> a ship with hotshot co-pilot equipped. Yeah, there's a with missing there, isn't there? When attacking with a ship with hot shot co-pilot equipped. Yeah. yeah. So but it's just really, really bad English. Um. Uh, when I hadn't even noticed that yeah. when defending against a ship with hotshot co yeah. so you're defending and you have hotshot co equipped that's what it says isn't it the attacker <laughs> must always spend must spend his focus uh, it, token the, the FAQ for me is less clear than the card yeah the card... when spending <laughs> The weapons guidance thing is... Yeah, the the, uh, bottom, the first two paragraphs of this errata are the ones we're actually exactly. ripping apart. Yeah. But the clarifications of if you spend a focus token at any points during these these two steps, it counts. Hotshot call pilot has been fulfilled is what the FAQ is trying to say just really badly. If the defender has hotshot co-pilot equipped it and the attacker cannot modify his dice from snapshot... Hmm. Hang on. Doesn't that imply... So is it saying... Have they changed it to say that whether you're attacking or defending, if you're... Remember, this last... is a clarification, not an errata, so the card text hasn't changed at all. The last one is weird purely because of a mention of accuracy corrector. Because yeah. it's effectively saying that although there is a chance for you to, if you've got a, a, a corrector equipped, you can actually correct it as your first modification, which then yeah. prevents you from doing spending the focus token because you can't modify dice anymore, which I think is incorrect because you ha have the you opportunity have to, to modify it. Yeah. yeah. So I think that but I'm wrong. I, you cannot play it the way I'm saying. No, but... Unless they're that's... stupid. Do you think that they farmed this one out to Games Workshop? No, no. I just think that they're really, really bad. Uh, I don't know. Because I would guess... This is going to sound really horrible now. But I would guess that this one was answered by a different member of the team to who has been doing the FAQs. And it's probably whoever designed the card did this one because its wording is it's worded differently to other entries that seem clearer. But yeah, it's just bad. I'm sure this one will be pink again in the next FAQ next. <laughs> and will actually be clearer. Which may or may not be next Monday. Um, um, Kanan uh, just clarifies how he works yeah. with Money and Falcon. And it is now written down in pink and soon to be black that you cannot do Kanan to get rid of Inertial Dampness and Daredevil. So that's good. Yeah. Um, M9G8 being the same as Palpatine, so working against Omega Leader in the same way Palpatine does and allowing you to modify Snapshot. Yeah. Because it isn't, Fine. isn't the shit. Yeah, it... It was how we also were five points cheaper. Yeah, it was how we were ruling the card in Calgary anyway. But there were. I've not been of, over to Calgary, so I didn't know. Yeah, uh, it just seems to be how it would work. But yeah. people were arguing that it wasn't. Rage yeah. when a ship receives two stress tokens at the same time, it occur. It counts as receiving one stress after receiving one stress. So this is the bit you were talking about with fell. This is the fell bit, yeah. yeah. Um, so it means so just in case you haven't got it in front of you and you listen to the podcast, it means that Suntir fell receives two focus tokens because he receives two individual occurrences. It also means that you can pull a stress and then pull a stress. Another stress, yeah. Yeah. Um, R3A2's ability triggers at the end of declare target step. Good. Yep, whatever. So this is the one that uh, boggles the mind. I'm um, so like the the hard hard nerf to the top end of the meta. 
Saboteur. Saboteur. If a damaged engine or a, a, if you somehow manage to stress the ship bef with a saboteur before it moves, you don't get to pick the move anymore because that was specifically yeah. referenced on the card. Um, it now says that the stress ship executes a white two. Nerfed saboteur. Sad times. Yeah. Well, it was about to come back with a soaker on captured tie. Yeah. Any chance for that card to be good is gone. Yeah. Well, the picture's quite good. Um, then we've got some of the actions and game effects. When an ability assigns a blue tag lock token to another ship that already has a blue tag lock token, does the receiving ship have to remove a previous tag lock token? Yes. Unless the receiving ship has the ability to maintain more than one. Oh, but... you've missed one. Sorry. Okay, uh, general. Miss? Uh, one, two, three, about fifth or sixth oh, question. Adding mobile, yeah. Yeah, adding mobile arc to um, and outmaneuver. Out yeah. yeah, yeah. Anything that is called an arc counts as an arc, apart from an arc one seventy, which counts as a useless ship. An arc one seventy. Yeah, I don't think that's in the FAQ. Um, so you don't get the choice of which tag lock to keep when manoeuvring passage with tag lock, basically. The newest one overrides the oldest one, which I was sure was in there already. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, no, I thought you got to choose. No, not anymore. So. Well, not anymore. Well, you get to choose until, like, Monday week. <laughs> yeah, unless or you well. printed out your last copy, in which case you got to choose until last year. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that's oh, it. That's that is the good. entire yes. FAQ, that the hour we've managed to talk about it for, which is about average. So shall we summarise, give our thoughts on the new meta? We have a brief state of the game chat. Or, uh, yeah. Uh, I think I will call out TLTs as having gotten strong again. They yeah. will be the new thing to complain about on the FFG forums. Okay. I'll have to go on the FFG forums. And complain about TLTs. <laughs> complain. Well, I've yes, that's what I'll do. Um, yeah, I agree with you on TLTs. I wonder if um, it brings Rebels back a bit as well. Because um, Rebels, nothing here. None of those big four hurt Rebels. No, I think Rebel Regen has the opportunity to come out a little bit more because the big attacks that were punching through were on ships that kind of used Zuckus or um, like Fen with mind winky stuff. Yeah. But I don't know what really was holding Rebel Regen back other than there being a lot of ways to slip damage under those shields now. So maybe that yeah. will be fine. Um, I could see uh, what would we call it at the the generic rebels having a place again, um, like four or five ships. Yeah, um, four BZ. What was it? Something did well at an event over weekend. Was it um, two B, uh, uh, two B, two Z, and an X or something? I think. Yeah, there's one of those. Somebody um, from Just Play in Liverpool finished like top twenty at Yavin with something like that. Yeah, um, uh, but yeah, that kind of rebel generic list yeah. could make a comeback it'll get beaten down again as it requires a decent amount of skill to fly well so tlts will just keep beating it and people complain that rebels need more of a buff and x-wings are terrible blah 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 but mm. um i think it hurts the scum faction the most uh, the, the yeah right, tend to agree the problem for me with Scum is that they don't have the synergy of Rebels or the just good ships of Imperials. They need these cheesy abilities to make them work. But every time they get something cheesy, people complain that it's cheesy and then it gets nerfed. So. Yeah, um, but that's, yeah, that's kind of their. Um place in the fluff isn't it it's like stuff that works that maybe shouldn't that um might hurt you at the same time yeah and uh, it's part of the design space for them but every time they in my opinion do it correctly 
people complain about it, and then they go, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. It comes back to, again, so, like they're saying, I don't think Zuckus was that bad. Manaru, maybe. I, I don't really mind the change. I think, obviously, the Jumpmaster should... It could be excluded from that discussion because I do think it's too, too cheap and the dial's too good, but that's a separate issue. Yeah. So um, TLTs were brought in and were good at a time where they weren't really, we weren't seeing so much of the sort of uh, erratering of cards. Um, and then they got slammed down by Jump Masters and a couple of other things. Yeah. So do you think that? in six months time if we see nothing but TLTs. Now I, I this is not me saying the sky is falling because yeah, I don't I've, think it has. No. Uh, but do you think that they might say uh TLT now cost seven points? Because actually TLTs have already taken one hit in the timing chart, although it was a small one. I would say that there has not been an errata to change point costs of a card in ten waves of X Wing. Okay. That would be my non-answered response to that. Okay, so a more nerf, direct question. They might, will they errata it to make it less powerful? I would not be opposed to them doing so. Um, but... That's still a non-answer. Yeah, I don't know. I'm <laughs> practising so I can be uh, Trump's new uh, press secretary. You practice, <laughs> yeah, so that you can... <laughs> so... Oh, those poor guys. They have to, like... It's like they're apologising for the thing that happened the day before without knowing what he said today. You know, like, um, every, this is a very British cultural reference. Um, is it the two Ronnies with the mastermind sketch where he's answering the question before? Yeah. Might be worth... Link that in the, the show notes just to... <laughs> for, for shits and giggles. If you really want to laugh, uh, kind of what 1970s British humour was like, watch that. Yeah, make sure we don't accidentally wink to any like blackface and racist British humour. Yeah, well, yeah, because you know BBC, awesome people. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, slight tangents. You know, too deep for uh, the show we're trying to do. Yeah, um, TLTs. So I mean, I have. I was thinking about this last night actually. Um, the if we are now in a universe where um, FFG just a rat's cards that they deem are too powerful it was a very rare thing that had only happened once then it happened again then they did four cards yeah which i don't have a problem with it's again there's multiple ways of trying to fix your game and do what you want with it and this is a perfectly valid approach but it does open up doors that you might want to keep shut and the, mm. the changing the points cost is a very different thing to changing the wording of a card because then it it just breaks more stuff mm. um it has knock-on effects to multiple squad and any change will do that and i don't know of another way to change tlts and keep them in the unique place in the design spectrum make it unique that's the thing i was going to say um i don't know i thought about making it a built-in gunner so you only get the second one if the first one misses okay but then it would be shit for six points and it would be awful for six points yeah if you make it unique it doesn't lose any of its individual it's still a good card but you good Nurse. You are now giving someone a K-Wing that comes with two unique cards. Because that's yeah. the only way to get a TLT is by a K-Wing. It comes with two of them. So TLT was designed to be a fix, in my opinion, because every fix card, near enough, I'm saying it and then probably regretting as someone on the internet points out how wrong I am, but they come in packs of two and in, like, auto thrusters, two in a Star Viper. TLT is yeah. two in a K-Wing. They're supposed to be useful cards. Um, I don't know. Hey, you only get one Jump Master in a Jump Master pack. Yeah, but was, what was that designed to fix? <laughs> Torpedoes, <laughs> other cards. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't like it being unique because I want to have two in my Hawks. 
leave my lists alone. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Yeah. This is this is I, where I'm we've all, got to. I'm happy for nerves as long as it doesn't touch my stuff. Yeah, my your special snowflakes. I think, as I said on the last podcast of Nova, you know, dear FFG, please nerf scissors. Rock is fine. Signed paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm happy to see what comes out of this because yeah. it is a drastic shake-up of the meta. Yeah. Everything that was at the top isn't at the top. On it, it isn't alone at the top anymore. As, yeah. as I said, I don't believe anything has been nerfed into oblivion. I can still see reasoned and not to uh, not having to make too many assumptions in my argument to state why things are still useful and good yeah but it will be interesting to see how the meta reacts because the sky will definitely be falling for like two weeks yeah how um so maybe my parting shot um they changed zuckus um so that you can only do it if you haven't got stress um they have not changed overclocked is it overclocked astromech so that you can only do it if you have stress if you don't have stress so overclocked or you uh, like to cap stress overclocked is if you spend a focus token you can um, you get a stress yeah you can keep get another focus token but you get a stress yeah but that only works for one round because at some point you have to remove a focus token and then you've got a trillion stress, so you can't do an action. Yeah, but you could mind link your way past that. Oh. Is that too situational? I mean, there's more situational as Zuckus. So, are you now saying that Dengar with overclocked and mind link Manaru is the way to go? Because then you just ignore the. Um... Well, you don't need mind link Manaru, you just need a mind link ship with green maneuvers. Um... Well, as in, we're just, I'm bringing back uh, Dengaru. You can, yeah, bringing bringing back Dengaru, except that I've you, got you've got to put uh, mind link and uh, so it's not remember, as good. Mind link goes backwards as well. So if you're willing to stress, self but only stress, it only goes backwards once. Yes, I I accept that, but no, I've there will be ways of making it work but that's not on the same level as Zuckus. Yeah, fair. Because well, what's that focus talk is going to do for you? You yeah. There's only a finite number of things that having an extra focus token can do. If you're, yeah. well, you're fine, if you're playing against multiple hotshot co-pilots and um, <laughs> I get, sorry, yeah. if you're running hotshot call pilot and are getting shot by multiple ships that aren't and you just have to spend your token all of the time because yeah. the, the FAQ is wrong. Yeah. Um, if you have hotshot co pilot yeah. in your. Basically, what that should say is if you own hotshot co pilot, then you always spend your focus token. Yeah, well, that's why I took. That would be simpler. That's why I took the focus action. I didn't take it not to spend it. Yeah. Uh, you must spend it at every opportunity. Okay, I think we'll call it there. We've been going yeah. for an hour, and I believe you have housework to do, so... I have, ch yeah, I should probably do the washing up, yeah. which is uh, the rock and roll British lifestyle that I lead. Yeah, it's understandable. Uh, mm. Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, thanks for listening on the podcast. Um, a shout out to all of the extra support um, I have garnered on uh, Patreon, as I don't give anything to Luke, I just, you know... Give him my scorn and indignation. Yeah, but you um, are British though, so that doesn't yeah. really cost you anything. Yeah, it's good. I I allow you to share screen space with me. Uh, is that yeah. not enough? No. <laughs> no. Um, there was a comment in there about comparative amount of screen space needed, but well, yeah, I, I could make. My... Doesn't quite transfer to the podcast, so I, I'm just making myself bigger now. Oh yeah, <laughs> all right. yeah, yeah, all of the screen space for me. That uh, was regrettable. Still doesn't transfer well over to the podcast. No. Uh, they, they get a gist. It's okay. Um, but yeah, thanks for all of the support. And um, yeah, people had actually been asking for us to do an FAQ rundown. So somebody oh. must listen. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, there you go. Thanks for listening. Yep. Yeah.
Thanks, everybody, and good night. Good night.